Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use orders section block. So we are on the WordPress dashboard and we are going to start by creating a new page. So I'll hover over new, then click on page. And from there, I'm going to call this page test. And at the bottom, we can see that we already have a section block. If you don't see the section block by default, just click on this plus icon and use the search function to find it. Now, if we go back to this block, we can see that we have a number of different layouts to choose from. Let's use a one by one block, which has two equal columns. Let's click on the list view icon to see the structure. And here we can see a section that contains two columns. We can see our block settings over on the right hand side. To add a block to the column, just click on this plus icon. And from there, you can add any block, including a section block. So I'll speed up the video while I add some content to the first column. I'm only going to be adding a heading, a paragraph with some dummy text and a button. After this, I'm going to be adding an image to the second column. So I'm going to click on this plus icon and from there, I'm going to click on image. Let's click on media library. I'll use the first photo and I'll click on select. Okay. So now we need to go ahead and format our section. So let's click on this list view icon at the top. And now we just want to go ahead and select the section. You can click on this icon to change our section width, but I'll leave it as default. Next, I'll click on this icon to center align our content. So now we can move on to our block settings. Our first option is columns and layout. You can adjust the number of columns in your layout by moving this slider. You can also change the value in the field next to it. And if we click on this icon, we can view our changes across multiple devices, but we are going to focus on desktop for this demonstration. We can also select column layout presets below, but we are just going to keep the first one. And now we can move on to the spacing tab. So we have the option to sync our settings from this section with our global settings, but we're not going to need this. Let's go down to padding and add 80 pixels of padding all around. So if we click on the section, we can see the space that was added inside. We can fine tune this by unlinking the values. So now we are going to set different values for each side. We'll keep the top as 80 and we'll change the right to about 20 pixels. The bottom is going to stay as 80 as well. By the way, check out the diagram and we can make the left the same value as the right, which is 20 pixels. Okay. So we are done with padding. We are not going to be adding any margin values so we can skip it. Let's go down to section structure. So we can set the maximum content width for our section using this slider or we can simply type in a value in this field. For our example, let's make this 1170. The next option lets you set your horizontal alignment. You can align left, center, or right. Now we can move on to minimum height. If we access the drop down menu, we can see three different options. Fit to screen will basically have the section take up the entire screen. But if we select custom, we'll be able to set a custom height using this slider, or we can simply type in the value in this field. For our example, I'll keep this setting as default. Okay. So we have a few more options here, which include custom CSS, visibility conditions, animations, and advanced. So these settings are not section block specific, but they could be used to enhance or control its functions. Okay. So now we can move on to the style tab at the top. So I'm just going to click on style and our first option under background settings is background type. We can set a solid color image or gradient. Let's use a solid color. Now let's click on this area to open up the color picker and we can either manually select a color or we can simply click on this icon to add a hex code, but I'm just going to use this color. Okay. So we are good so far. And the next option is background overlay. So for this one, we can try using a gradient. We instantly get a gradient overlay, but we can also use one of these preset options. So once you have selected a gradient color, you can adjust the color blends by moving the available handles. You can also click on the handle to open up the color picker. If you'd like to choose a different color to add another color, just click on an empty space on the bar. So as an example, I'll use these controls to choose a light aqua color. Our next gradient option is type, and this is where we can choose between linear or radial. However, linear is the only option that lets you adjust your gradient angle. And we also have the option to adjust the overlay opacity of our gradient. This controls how transparent or opaque your overlay will be. We can also adjust the look of the overlay using CSS filters. So instead of writing CSS code, we can simply move these sliders to make quick changes. We also have a blend mode option to make further adjustments if we need to. So as an example, let's try the difference blend mode. Okay. So this is how it looks. 
Okay, so now I'll go ahead and remove this overlay. Our next option is border. If you want to use a border, you must first set a width. So I'm going to use two pixels and this can also be unlinked if you want to set a width for each side. Now at the bottom, we can either choose a custom color or we can select from one of these preset colors. The next option is border radius and this controls the roundness of your borders corners. It could also be unlinked. You can set a box shadow by turning this option on and then you can set your shadow color. You can access the shadow options by clicking on this icon. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear these options. Let's turn the box shadow off by toggling the switch. And we can scroll up to set the border width to zero to remove it. And as for the border radius, we can just click on the reset button or make this zero. Now, the final option we are going to discuss is shape divider. So now we can see our shape divider options. We have top and bottom. Let's start with the top first. Under type, I'll select triangle to show you what it looks like. So we can see this shape at the top of the section. So we can take a look at another option. Let's try a cloud. So if you want to, you can always change the color of your shape divider. And currently this can only be a solid color. You also have the option to adjust the width of your shape divider. The heights can also be adjusted. So both of these options can be configured across multiple devices. You would just have to click on the computer icon on the right hand side. So remember that a shape divider can also be added to the bottom of your section. Both the top and the bottom share the same options. Okay, so let's remove both of these shape dividers. I'll click on top and select none for this one as well. And now we can scroll all the way up to move to the advanced tab. So first we have responsive options to show or hide our section across different devices. We can also reverse our sections columns on mobile. And finally under section settings, we can select an HTML tag for our section using this drop down menu. All right, so we are done configuring our section. So let's move to the columns. So I'm going to start with the first column. Let's add 20 pixels of padding all around. We are going to keep the padding linked. So I'm going to press enter. And now if we click on the column, we can see the spacing that was added. We need to do the same to the second column. So I'm just going to click on it and let's add our 20 pixels of padding. Press enter and that should be good. So if you want to, you can always configure styling options for your columns, but we are not going to do this for this example. Let's preview our changes in a new tab. Okay, so here is our about section. So you now know how to use orders section block. And if this were a real section, you'd have to go back to your WordPress editor to publish it. You just have to go back and click on the publish button twice and that should do it. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one.